Alright, this video is for Chem 230 Lab, which is the introduction to Organic Chemistry Lab, and this fourth portion of the lab is perhaps my favorite, because we get into making molecules, and because making molecules is a lot like cooking, it's one of the reasons I first got interested in chemistry. And there's a couple things we might want to focus on. One would be the overall reaction that's taking place. So which molecules are we starting with? Which molecules are we ending up with, and how does that happen? So in terms of theory, we can write on paper that aspirin, also known as acetyl salicylic acid, is made from salicylic acid reacting with acetic acid, and with the presence of a catalyst to speed up the reaction, which is usually either phosphoric or sulfuric acid, then you would have an esterification where the phenol group in the salicylic acid will end up getting an acetyl group from the acetic anhydride and making the acetyl salicylic acid. A byproduct would be acetic acid. So that's the overall reaction. Another thing we might want to focus on is the procedure itself, which is sort of the recipe, the directions, if you were, on how you would make this. Um, there are certain things to consider, like which might be the limiting reagent, which thing do we have in excess, time, temperature, ingredients, etc., etc. So, a couple things that I will expect you to know as we do these labs are certainly the structures and names of the starting materials. And I think there's a video I recently saw on the web where they kept saying like acetyl sal acetic acid rather than acetyl salicylic acid. And I don't know whether I was just hearing it wrong, but it'd be really hard to understand what somebody was saying if they weren't clear about the name. And then the name is useful, but the formula and the, the actual detailed structure is much more useful. So we had just started in the lecture talking about functional groups. And so that's something that has a bearing here. So the phenyl group, we have a phenyl group right here. The phenyl group attached to the alcohol group makes this a phenyl alcohol or a phenol. So we have the phenol attached to the carboxylic acid. And if you get these big pieces sort of memorized, what a phenyl group is, what a phenol is, what a carboxylic acid is, then you know a phenyl group with a hydroxyl and a carboxylic acid is salicylic acid. That makes it a lot easier to remember than trying to remember the atom placement of each atom, because that's much more information. Likewise, the acetic anhydride is what would you would get from a dehydration reaction between two acetic acids. So here's essentially one acetic acid. There's the other acetic acid, and as those two came together and lost water. That's how they made acetic anhydride. This is a very reactive molecule. So many things can move in and react with the carbonyl group. Again, we'll see some mechanisms both in the lab and the lecture. Um, we'll work through how these things form. And so then one half essentially of this acetic anhydride gets attached to the phenol and that's how it makes the acetyl salicylic acid molecule. So that's the overall reaction we're going to do. Um, let's talk about procedure. Phosphoric acid is corrosive. Um, if you spill any acid on things, we're going to use an acid neutralizer to clean them up. The fumes from the acetic anhydride are hazardous because that's acetic acid. Now there's a lot of different schools of thought on that. Most people are gonna say, oh, acetic acid is just in vinegar, that's edible. But if those vapors get into your lungs, that's not as good a place for acetic acid to be. So that can do some tissue damage in your lungs. That's why we work oftentimes when we use things that might fume or might have uh, vapors or bubble, um, we might put those in the hood because then the airflow would carry those things away from us and we wouldn't breathe them in. So oftentimes when you see a warning to not breathe vapors, you might think about doing things in a hood. All right, so basically we would take solid salicylic acid, and this is a very small scale reaction. We'd put 
0.42 grams in a 5 milliliter conical vial. Conical vial is very small piece of glassware. So sort of a vial but with a cone shape at the bottom, hence the name conical vial. And this would be the workspace for the experiment. Um, we get the actual mass. Our analytical balances go to four digits past the decimal, so you shouldn't just have 0.42 grams on your report. And it could be a different amount, 0.4316 grams, whatever. You add acetic anhydride, and the 1.1 milliliters makes this in excess. So the excess reagent, oftentimes you're going to have an expensive, difficult to get compound that you're going to make that the limiting reagent so that you can get as much of this converted as possible. And this guy is much cheaper. So you're going to use an excess of this to drive the reaction forward and to give you as much valuable product as you can for the least money. So there's a lot of very practical aspects to this. Also, if you have an excess reagent, it does, in addition to driving the reaction, um, more to completion, we don't have to weigh this as accurately as if it's in excess. And then a small amount of the catalyst, three drops, is good enough for this. Just speeds up the reaction a little bit. We're going to want it to stir to make sure there's good, complete, even mixing. And then an air condenser is sort of like a water condenser we used in the distillation, but without the jacketing. So it's essentially just a tube. that we would attach to the conical vial to make sure that if this heated up or got boiling for any reason that the vapors would recondense on this condenser and come back in. Since we're not going to be actively heating this a lot, it's not going to be a whole lot of vapors that escape and need to be condensed back in, but it's good to have this sort of chimney to keep things where we want them to be. And then um, we secure the vial and condenser with an o-ring and a cap. Um, we heat the mixture in a hot bath. So you basically have just the three ingredients. You'll put them in the conical vial and then in a hot bath between 75 and 85 degrees Celsius. Um, if this is stirring during the reaction it will become homogeneous. So initially the salicylic acid is not very soluble. There'll be the solid salicylic acid in there but during the course of the reaction, this will dissolve as it reacts. And if it doesn't all dissolve, you just throw a little more acetic anhydride in to make sure the reaction is complete. Once everything's dissolved, you want to continue to heat so any soluble salicylic acid will also get a chance to react. And then cautiously, while you're still heating and stirring, you'll add a little more water. And this water that you put in there will um, make sure that any excess acetic acid reacts and won't be in there when you try to work this up. And then the beauty of this reaction, one of the beauties of this reaction is that purifying and isolating the product is super simple because if you just allow the conical vial and its contents to cool to room temperature, then you know, take the condenser off of this, but uh, just allow this conical vial and its contents to cool to room temperature, then crystals should form because in this small amount of solvent, this amount of acetic, acetyl salicylic acid will not be soluble. And if this cools off, it'll be super saturated. Once it gets a chance to sit, then it will start to grow crystals. If you want really good big crystals, then what you're going to want to do is cool this as slowly as possible so you gradually get to the point where it's super saturated. And then if a lot of crystals don't form at the same time, then the molecules that are going to start to crystallize out will grow on top of the original crystals rather than just forming their own new crystals. So if you have very slow crystallization and the molecules have time to find the best place to crystallize, they will grow on top of existing crystals. That's the best place for them to go. And um, so then you'll get a few very large crystals rather than a lot of small crystals. For us, um, if we cool it just normally and don't um, jacket it or insulate it so that it'll cool much slower, 
we will probably get lots of little crystals, but if you rush this, then you'll just get a powder. So we want to just let this slowly cool to room temperature so that we'll get the biggest crystals possible. Then to make sure we get everything out, we're going to cool it in ice water to make sure it's even cooler. And then we collect the product by filtration and then we can let that dry and then weigh the amount of salicylic acid that we would get. So it's an awesome reaction. It's super simple and it allows you to make something familiar and useful out of materials you may not be as familiar with. So um, I'll talk next time maybe a little bit about the mechanism of this reaction. What we're also going to make available is there's a video of somebody making aspirin in the lab so you can watch that. If we had more time we would make our own videos of us making molecules but we're not allowed to use campus right now so we'll just stick with this. So that's the experiment we would do and um, be ready for the next video on some of the chemistry that's going on behind the scenes.